Yes, and with just over 50 matches played at the 34th edition of the Africa Cup of Nations uh, this weekend, ultimately the curtains come down on the what has been an enthralling piece of African soccer on show in Abidjan, as well as the rest of uh, five cities in Ivory Coast. And of course, uh, this particular one today, it is the third place playoff, of course, Democratic Republic of Congo facing off against Bafana, Bafana, South Africa. That's the match will be kicking off at 11 p.m. African time and tomorrow of course uh, the pinnacle the climax of the tournament that's the final coming on at 11 p.m. as well between the uh, hosts Ivory Coast against Nigeria. Teres Wayaki welcome uh, again on Fan Zone you know and my first question will be has this been the best AFCON ever? Not just AFCON. Mm -hmm. No exaggeration. This has been the best tournament I've ever seen all my life. Mm -hmm. And I started watching football tournaments with Mexico 86. Mm -hmm. Diego Armando Maradona, mm -hmm. Hand of God, mm -hmm. solo run against mm -hmm. England in the uh, quarterfinals. Mm -hmm. I've watched, I watched Euro 88, mm -hmm. Rude Kulit, mm -hmm. Marco Van Basten, mm -hmm. Ronald Koeman, Frank Roykard, champions of the European uh, Cup that year so really um if we, if we go back 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 in time i've watched some of the greatest tournaments in world football and i've never seen anything like this mm -hmm. and that's because the the game has been given its best of of commitment by the players and that has also coincided with very good officiating, especially courtesy of VAR. That has aided a lot of unfairness from taking place, and it has also aided a lot of stars being born mm -hmm. at the right time, mm -hmm. at the right place. Mm -hmm. And it has also coincided with the phenomenal growth of football. Mm -hmm. Men football has grown. Mm -hmm. Football has grown. Football has grown. Men football women's football, uh, the disabled's football, and Kenya does regularly qualify for the Disabled World Cup. Mm -hmm. So we're not doing too badly in that front. Where we need to uh, spruce up is the men's mm -hmm. and women's uh, sort of able bodies, quote unquote, mm -hmm. football. That's, w that's where we are lagging mm -hmm. behind. Mm -hmm. But the kind of football we've seen in this tournament mm -hmm. is absolutely mwah, now, spectacular. Now, how can, how can the continent build on its success? Uh, sticking to VAR, we need, uh, there's been one or two decisions mm -hmm. that can slow down that success. Mm -hmm. For instance, if you remember Mali Ivory Coast, mm -hmm. there was a blatant and obvious mm -hmm. clear handball mm -hmm. from Ivory Coast inside the box. That was a penalty not given. But a minute or two later, yeah, they Mali did. were given yes. a, a, another penalty. Yes. So you and see... And Kosono was the culprit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> the guy who caught the, the, yeah, the, the, the handball in the first it, instance yes, yes. And, and got away with it. Mm -hmm. VR did not even check the first mm -hmm. instance. So you can see, when you leave room for that kind of thing, mm -hmm. it makes us again now start blaming Africa. We say, you see Africa, the problem with us, why mm -hmm. we can't grow and, and win a World Cup. Mm -hmm. This is what we always do. So that, that kind of thing mm -hmm. can mess up a whole tournament mm -hmm. such as this. Mm -hmm. Mali, really, I felt pain. So, for Africa, them. so you say Africa should build on, 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 on the successes of the tournament, but what are yes. the successes? The successes are like that VAR. Mm -hmm. And even the English uh, commentators, some of the best, like Gary Neville, mm -hmm. have commended us for that. Mm -hmm. BBC did a proper coverage on VAR in this mm -hmm. tournament. They mm -hmm. said English Premier League and yeah. Europe in general mm -hmm. has a lot to learn from the way the mm -hmm. AFCON. VAR has been handled. Mm -hmm. So that's one huge success that we can build on mm -hmm. and avoid those kind of mm -hmm. small, small errors mm -hmm. that can give loopholes to mm -hmm. uh, the tarnishing of, of our reputation. Mm -hmm. So another area is there are areas of Africa that mm -hmm. have grown very well mm -hmm. football-wise. Mm -hmm. We can see that in West Africa. Mm -hmm. North Africa have also grown, but mm -hmm. um, a few of them are Talk lagging about behind. Infrastructure. But East Africa... Mm -hmm we've been left behind. Mm -hmm. Talk about infrastructure that we've it's seen in Ivory Coast. Yes, yes. Look at the stadiums. Mm -hmm. Spectacular. In five cities. You look at Ivory Coast GDP. Mm -hmm. We're below Kenya's. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not as 
they are not at our level. But it's all about sports investment. But it's about sports investment, taking mm -hmm. it seriously. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm saying East Africa, mm -hmm. we've lagged behind. Mm -hmm. You and look I, at the level of football here, mm -hmm. and you imagine throwing Harambe stars over there in the mix, mm -hmm. and you just hold your head and say, Woi, 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 woi. It would have been very embarrassing for us. And we only have three years. Remember, we are co-hosting the Africa Cup of Nations in 2027. Fingers crossed, if all goes well, yeah, if but, we don't but, mess up. Yeah, yeah, but even... So, mm -hmm. we have a very short window mm -hmm. to make full use of mm -hmm. and reach in terms of infrastructure and also in terms of our game. Mm -hmm. Our game needs to step up. Yeah, and of course, um, infrastructure, we've seen um, even the ground that will host the final tomorrow. That's uh, the Alassane Water, you know, or Stade Olympique Bimpe, as they call it, mm. you know, and that's, um, it took, they built it for three years, you know, mm. for, uh, to just get, in, uh, get mm. ready for this particular championship. And um, looking at uh, some of the sound bites from uh, Kenyan authorities, you know, and that's the sports uh, cabinet sector, Babu Namomba, promising that um, there will be a new stadium that will be built from ground up. That's uh, the Talanta, uh, Talanta Stadium. That's on Gong, along Gong Road. Football only Jambur. stadium. Yeah, football only stadium. So we, we, <coughs> when that happens, I think when that will be launched, then we, I would say that Kenya is just fifty percent there. But now let's see the real work beginning. You know, we have two years for that because yeah. I watched an interview. Dennis Oliet, you know, was at uh, in Ivory Coast, mm -hmm. and apparently he was told by one of the the. FIFA, the CAF guys, mm -hmm. that we only have until 2026 to be ready, yeah. infrastructure -wise. Because the, the, inspection the inspection team will be here will soon. Be here. Mm -hmm. 2026, mm -hmm. and the tournament is in 2027. Mm -hmm. If we are not ready mm -hmm. by that time, mm -hmm. we stand a chance of losing the course. And, and I think, right. yeah, and, and it's all about, um, uh, remember that the East Africa Pamoja bid, Kenya was a late entrant into that particular partnership between, but Uganda and, and Tanzania had already shown their interest, mm. not they already approached CAF to have the to host or to stage the games in 2027. So I think maybe uh, it will take a lot of um, collaboration between the East African Jumuiya ya Africa Mashariki, ile Shikamano, no, always Kenya iweze kukua tayari, you know. We have to do our part though. It will, it will have to, you know, involve all the mm -hmm. three countries yes. for each country to pull. You know, to, we've seen uh, Tanzania, you know, re staging the inaugural, uh, the, the, the Africa Super Cup. Was it the Super Cup? The yes. Africa uh, League? The Africa League, you know? You saw the opening ceremony. Yeah, you know. <laughs> and yeah. It, it, was, it was crazy. In yes. fact, Tanzania, the Benjamin Kappa uh, uh, Stadium was filled to the rafters. You know, and you look across the where that particular tournament was, you know, like in Luanda, mm. you know, even, even in, in Pretoria or in, 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 um, in Cairo, it was the same scene, you know, like these soccer mad places. Mm. So I think that was a, a really good entry or a good picture to tell the CAF that East Africa was ready for this particular championship. So no doubt, Kenya will be ready. We only need to have like, since there, we need six stadiums, right? And we are three countries. So we just need two facilities per, uh, to the minimum, to the minimum best we can do. So, but we can all be optimistic, you know? We can all talk, occupy such positions like where we are, standing, uh, we are sitting right now and be optimistic that Kenya will be able to pull off that particular tournament. And of course, this year also, we could be hosting Chan and, you know, and that will really give us that impetus to work harder and beat the deadlines that CAF has uh, put up as when we should be ready. But let's go back to AFCON. Should FIFA respect this particular tournament more? Yes. Of I course, we know the background of that particular question. Yes, FIFA have given us a lot of respect in as far as CAF is. But this is, why I'm asking, this is why mm -hmm. I'm asking. This is why I'm asking in regards to CAF, to AFCON, right? Remember, they've been push and pull on the dates. You know, right now, the mm. tournament is happening at the mid-season of the most of the European leagues. Yes. A number, a good number of African players play their trade there. You know, very many mm. players play their trade in, in these European leagues. Uh, there have been, we saw the 2019 edition uh, being held in June, July. The 2021, which was in 2022, but early January, you know, mm. it happened in January. So, I mean, uh, it happened, this, this, there have been the push and pull of having this particular tournament go back to where it happened in 2019, that's mm. in June, July, June, July, when the season is yes. off, you know, so, yes. and this has amounted in some quarters to lack of respect for 
you know, like Africa is being pushed around. Take this tournament to this particular date when, all, when clubs in Europe can. But certainly, yes. Africa is not where the money is. The money is in Europe. You see, the thing is, mm -hmm. the, the last two AFCONs, the one for 2021 held in Cameroon, in Cameroon yes. in 2022, y yes. and this one, mm -hmm. the issues had to do a lot with the weather, mm -hmm. which was more internal, more African than to do with FIFA. Mm -hmm. So they say the weather is best this time of year as mm -hmm. opposed to June, July, mm -hmm. in their neck of the woods. Mm -hmm. So it's really an issue of us mm -hmm. having caused the change mm -hmm. of, of timeline. Mm -hmm. But in terms of releasing footballers mm -hmm. to come and participate in the CAF Africa Cup of Nations, mm -hmm. FIFA has been supportive. Where there has been push and pull is clubs in, say, Europe, mm -hmm. Uh, finding it very hard to release their players mm -hmm. to come and play in the CAF Africa Cup of Nations. Mm -hmm. Which, if I'm to look at it mm -hmm. from a neutral point mm -hmm. of view, mm -hmm. is also understandable. Because... What do you mean? In this sense, <laughs> in this sense, <laughs> I've, I've, I have a contract with you. I've bought you for so, so much amount of money. I bought you to win the league for me. Or to keep me up mm -hmm. in the league. Mm -hmm. I pay you well. I treat you well. And then your country comes in and they say they want you mid-season when I'm really counting on you to do the business. Mm -hmm. Naturally, there'll be a push and pull. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nat naturally. Mm -hmm. you, it can't just be like, ah, no, you want him. No problem. Have him. There'll be that that's, push that's and pull. That's how it goes with the European teams, you know. Even the Asian the, clubs right now. The Asian yes, Cup is the, ongoing. The Asian but Cup. And you it, can't see such push and pull. It's, it's there, it's mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. it's there. They don't just do it gladly, mm -hmm. it's there. Mm -hmm. And it's something that has, it's not new. It mm -hmm. has caused problems for years because initially AFCON used to be held January, February. Yes. That's bang mid-season, as you mm -hmm. put it. Mm -hmm. The argument has always been from the clubs, why don't you do this off-season mm -hmm. when we won't have an issue mm -hmm. with you? June, July. Mm -hmm. June, July 2019, Africa Cup of Nations. Did you hear uh, the European clubs, for be example, be complain? Because no. the European clubs, because it was off-season. Off-season. Mm -hmm. So the bone of contention is this thing of you living mid-season. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Having said so, African nations also now uh, have... Uh, because it's, it's about self-interest. They also get an, uh, an, a podium f f on which to complain. Mm -hmm. This thing, as long as it's held in January, February, mm -hmm. this bone of contention mm -hmm. will always be there. Mm -hmm. That's a fact of life. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I, I would suggest that we have these tournaments in June, July. Mm -hmm. But then, what will happen? Some countries won't be able to host these tournaments because they say the vagaries of the weather. Mm -hmm. But there's ways around it. Build stadiums um, that can cope with that kind of weather mm -hmm. in, 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 in that time of, during that time of the year. You just need to have a, a rooftop, have mm -hmm. it air-conditioned. Mm -hmm. Just do that, mm -hmm. and we won't have these issues. Mm -hmm. There are countries in Europe, take Sweden, for example, very, very cold country. Mm -hmm. Most of the time is nighttime mm -hmm. in Sweden because mm -hmm. it's, it gets dark very early. They've put up stadiums that can cope with that kind of weather. Or in Qatar, where it was 30 plus. Or in Qatar, where mm. it was 30 plus. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. just do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and outside the stadiums, build infrastructure that can cope with that kind of weather. And, and life goes on. Yes. But most importantly, the yes. stadiums. Yes, yes, indeed. Most important. And of course, that, that particular debate, um, you read most of the views about um, the, uh, the, that the push and pull, mm. you know. Uh, that the tug of war between the European clubs, I think it's now dying down because most of the coaches now know what to do. You know, we s just saw like um, like in Bundesliga, uh, Xavi was losing quite a good number, six or seven players from uh, key players that have really been uh, part of the cog that have put them at the top of Bundesliga. And uh, what he did was a week before the AFCON started, after he had released all the players that were coming to Africa for, to play for their respective countries, he, the previous match he did just have players in those positions already, you know, like you, 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 you try it out, you, you prepare yourself, you know, uh, so most of the coaches you, you really see, put in a plan. It's tricky because mm -hmm. what happens in the end is African players lose out. Because yeah, you're when going you go to buy back, an yes. African player, you'll be, 
initially you'll be going to buy an African player and you think, ah, ah this guy will be going home AFCON mid-season when I need it most. Let me look for someone in Europe. Yeah. Or, or from Brazil. Yeah, and uh, Brazil also go for, for, go for the... Argentina. Go, go also are released mid-season mid to go for their... Copa America. Yeah. Copa America is usually June, July. Yes. So it, it then affect the season. The season. Yes. yes. Yeah. It's Africa Cup of Nations yeah. that's most notorious. And the preparations are for the and new a, season. And Asian mm -hmm. Cup. Mm -hmm. So African players will lose in the long term. You remember anyway, Sir Alex Ferguson never used to buy African players as such. And anyway, anyway, I think for me yeah. um, and, and uh, of being how, how truly black we are, I'll just like, um, uh, you know, tell calf or urge calf to hold on strong. Don't be, you know, be cowed or don't be swayed to go to calendars that favor where the money is because at long last I think it's more important to play for for your national team than even the club. It you know? is, yeah. but just change the dates yes. to, to suit. But don't accommodate and, anyone's and views, build you know, stadiums, that's been... And build stadiums that really can cope with that, that weather. They can just come and dictate to Africa on when they should have their own tournament. I think that has really not augured well uh, for, for, for most of uh, the, you know, the, 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 the liberators of Africa like who we are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> liberators of Africa football. Anyway, let's talk about uh, Ivory Coast playing Nigeria uh, tomorrow, you know. And how, how important is it that Ivory Coast is in the final, the hosts? Unbelievable. Their first game against Guinea Bissau, they come in, you expect, man, Ivory Coast, these guys, and they're playing at home. Mm -hmm. ah, 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 ah. They're mm -hmm. going to play beautiful football. Mm -hmm. Four minutes into the game, kum, goal, mm -hmm. Ivory Coast. Mm -hmm. But when you look at them football-wise, mm -hmm. you're seeing ah, ah, they are disjointed. There's mm -hmm. something lacking mm -hmm. here. Full time, two nil. They won that game, but still, yeah. I, what's happening? They're not really impactful mm -hmm. I, in terms of stringing those passes, mm -hmm. playing like a proper Ivory Coast side that mm -hmm. you're used to. Mm -hmm. Two time Afcon champions. Mm -hmm. Then their next game, they play Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Now this is where they're exposed proper, because Nigeria are not outstanding. They're not the super eagles that we've known them to be. Mm -hmm. They're not that team of J.J. Okocha, mm -hmm. Kanu Nwankwo, mm -hmm. Daniela Mokachi, mm -hmm. Finidi George, mm -hmm. Emmanuel Amunike, Rashidi Yekini, and the teams that succeeded them. Mm -hmm. They're really, really not there. Mm -hmm. They're playing a defensive game. Mm -hmm. They hit you on the counter, mm -hmm. Mourinho style. Mm -hmm. Even their coach is Portuguese like Mourinho. Paseiro. Uh, Paseiro. Yeah. Yeah. They, it's, they, it's Mourinho who gave him the, the word. Uh, they, <laughs> they give you... One nil, mm -hmm. and they're satisfied with mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Once they hit you now, they go back defensive. Mm -hmm. And you're seeing Ivory Coast, man, they're not there. They didn't quite turn up. Mm -hmm. One nil, they lost. Mm -hmm. And then came the Thara beating. Mm -hmm. No one saw this mm -hmm. coming. Mm -hmm. Four nil from Equatorial mm -hmm. Guinea. But then, because of this window of being uh, third, uh, third best team mm -hmm. for four teams, given that opportunity, they qualified as the fourth team into the round of 16. Mm -hmm. They sacked their coach and a rebirth mm -hmm. takes place. Mm -hmm. They bring in, of course, someone who's quite well versed with uh, Ivorian football. He was the assistant coach, mm -hmm. the previous coach. Emma Sfai. Emma Sfai. Mm -hmm. And even though he's spent most of his early life in France, mm -hmm. won the Under-17 World Cup in 2001 with France, mm -hmm. and played for the Under-21 team uh, with France, before moving uh, to, to play for Ivory Coast mm -hmm. at senior level, played mm -hmm. at the AFCON in 2006, runner-up, mm -hmm. and played at the AFCON in 2008, mm -hmm. and played at the World Cup in 2006 with, with Ivory Coast, he somehow miraculously turns this team around. Mm -hmm. And here they are. Mm -hmm. They are a late bloomer yes. in the true and actual sense. Yes, Even yes. in their game, mm -hmm. like we just saw from the footage there, they score late. Mm -hmm. And, and leave it till late. Mm -hmm. You don't want to leave it till late mm -hmm. against Nigeria. Mm -hmm. In mm -hmm. fact, if Nigeria score the first goal against you, you, you're a shoe out. Yeah. You need to dominate against Nigeria. You need to score the first goal, mm -hmm. and if possible, a second, but just dictate that game. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Even though they're at their weakest, mm -hmm. uh, some 
people are strongest at their weakest. Yes. So and, you, you, you really have to dominate that game. Yes, indeed. We're talking about uh, the um, AFCON 2023, an exciting championship that has seen uh, the hosts, Ivory Coast, uh, holding the tournament in five cities, Buake, Korogo, San Pedro, Abijo, Abijo. Uh, and Yamasokoro. Yes. yes. Right? Yes. And uh, all that, you know, just like um, we saw the sports minister, Kenyan sports minister there, and hopefully will be able to take good lessons from that particular championship and just give Kenyans an extraordinary uh, showpiece of an event. Since 1987, when we hosted all Africa Games, Kenya has been, you know... I was there. Uh, I went. Uh, yeah, when, when the, the lights final. went off. No, 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 no. That I, was against that's what I was watching at home. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching from home. I saw, boom. Yeah. Yeah. Nice one. It I was can dark all over a that yeah. met here, Kina Murila, were also in that particular But the final game. day I went. Yes. I watched the final. And Kenya, Kenya lost Egypt. Egypt. Yes. yes, one game. And, Kenya lost. Lost. and that's when the two facilities were built by the way. The two facilities that we have in the country, actually. In Nairobi, that's Nyayo and Kasa right No, no, no. Yeah. Nyayo was earlier. 83. It's, it started, co they started construction of that in 1980, mm -hmm. and 83, 84, mm -hmm. 84, yeah, that's when Nyayo yeah. now became, 84, I yeah. think, 84, was, I that's think when it became a, yeah. a proper stadium yeah. ready for use. Yeah. Before that, they used to use City Stadium, or now called Joe Kadenga Stadium. Yeah, and that was And I went to Nyayo in 1980, that's where I watched Murila play yeah. with the naked eye. Nice one. And that's all on all for the all Africa game. So in essence, what we're saying is that we need those facilities up so that we can host international events of repute. But also remember we asked on our Facebook page, that's the Y254 page, on who is likely to take the particular dadim tomorrow. Who is about who will win tomorrow's final between Ivory Coast, the hosts against Nigeria. That's the AFCON 2023 What final. are guys saying? Yeah, let me just read <laughs> a few of them here. Alex Kalex says Nigeria Kichwa. Kichwa, uh, what does that mean? That's the Nigeria head. They're uh, going to win. Uh, uh, they are winning. He's betting uh, on them to oh, win. Oh, he's betting. Hey, Kichwa means hey, betting. Kichwa yeah. means, hey, <laughs> hey, 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 yeah. Yeah. Baba Chumba saying Cote d'Ivoire, you know, and um, uh, first officer, young boy Clinton, say Avery Coast to Shindi. Shindi means yeah. victory. Yeah, yeah. and Jose Masudi says Avery Coast to Akina yeah. Drogba. Oh. Okay, and uh, Glenn Blim says Ivory Coast. Alex Kalex, I say that, I'll say Nigeria Kichwa na hapa wingi wa mabao kwa wekezaji. Uh, that's really the mm -hmm. language that you were saying, yeah? <laughs> Think Amora Murapa says Nigeria. First officer, young boy Clinton says Ivory Coast Ushindi. And also Willie Bazu, mcheza kwao hutunzwa, napia hutunzwa. The two Kiswahili words that really marry each other but mean more of the same thing. Baba Chumba says, oh, Cote d'Ivoire, say to the bank, okay, everybody just put in their money, oh, Cote d'Ivoire here. Mcheza kwao hutunzwa, <laughs> China boy agrees as well. And then Daudi Mzalendo, yule... Pan-Africanist. I told you to be Pan-African. Nigeria, mm -hmm. I'm David Norman Mwangi from Bondeni, Kamkunji, Eldoret. Nigeria will win it. Thank you so much, Daudi Mzalendo. And uh, Charlie Charles and some Ivory Coast Kichwa and Abud Kayala. Dakitari wa meno ya kuku mayanja. Okay, that guy is not saying anything really. <laughs> and well, who else? Let me uh, maybe go back here and see. Mm. Dennis Nyongesa says, Hapa ni kichwa, hapa ni kiwa na muesi nbungoma, team Ivory Coast. And then, um, uh, K looks like uh, Mweni Michael says Cote d'Ivoire. Okay, keep your predictions coming through on Y254. And of course, the fans on comes in. We'll talk about the third place player of today, Democratic Republic of Hungary, South Africa. And we'll just look at their history, uh, their run, especially in this particular tournament with Tyrus Waiyaki. Stay on Y254. This is the touchline. <laughs> 